Okay, so in the MLB, you guys, we have players who are smart on the field. But what about the MLB players who are smart off the field? What is going on, guys? Sports Lawyer here. We're back with another video. Today, I'm going to be going through four of the smartest players who have played in this decade. Before I start, though, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell and leave a like on this video. But without further ado, let's get into it. So coming in at number four, I've got Kevin Slowey. So you guys, Kevin Slowey didn't really have that good of an MLB career. He had a 4.62 career ERA, and his best year was in 2008 when he won 12 and 11 with a 3.99 ERA and had 123 strikeouts. So he wasn't that good. And there was a year where he had an ERA over six. So yeah, Kevin Slowey's career lasted from 2007 until 2011, he missed 2012, and then 2013 and 2014. So, yeah, he didn't really have that good of an LB career. However, when he was in school, the guy was actually pretty smart. Because it says here that when Kevin Slowey was in school, he get an exceptional 1,420 points on his SATs. So, that's really good. And if you want proof, let me tell you that that's enough to get you to Harvard or Yale. And getting into Harvard or Yale is hard because they're really good universities. So when Kevin Slowey was growing up, this guy was actually pretty smart. And he ended up going to the University of South Carolina. So, yeah. But he wasn't that good of an MLB player, so that's pretty much all I have to say about him. So at number four, Kevin Slowey. Coming in at number three, Chris Carter. No, not the Chris Carter that I made a video on. Another Chris Carter. This guy, he only lasted three years in the MLB and wasn't really, he was pretty much unknown. His best year was in 2010 when he had a 263 batting average with four runs and 24 RBIs. And his position, he was a outfielder, but he was really a pinch hitter. And the teams that he played on were the Boston Red Sox and the New York Mets. But Chris Carter was actually a pretty smart guy when he was, again, also in school. Basically, when he was in college, he was at Stanford, and he graduated in three years. Let me stop right there. First off, it's really hard to get into Stanford because it's a really good university. Second of all, already graduating from Stanford is also pretty hard because you got to work really hard. But graduating in three years is even harder. It's pretty rare for someone to graduate in three years. And Chris Carter, well, after college, he decided to become a baseball player. And the guy wasn't too good. I mean, he did have one good year, and that was in 2010, where it was a mediocre season for him. But in the minor leagues, he was also pretty good. Not too bad of a player. He was actually really good in the minor leagues. But he basically never turned out to be a good player in the major leagues. So... Unfortunately for Chris Carter, the guy was good in the minors, but wasn't a guy who was really good in the major leagues. Coming in at number two, I've got Craig Breslow. Now, you guys, people are saying that Craig Breslow is the smartest player in MLB history. And like most of these players on this list, the guy, he had actually a pretty good MLB career. He probably had the best career out of all these people. He, he had 23 wins, 30 losses, a 3.45 career ERA, and had 442 career strikeouts. That's not too bad. And here's why Craig Bristol was called basically the smartest player in LB history. Because basically, he went to the University of Yale, which is already pretty hard to do. And when it came to biophysics and biochemistry, he was number one. But really, this guy Craig Breslow, he was a really smart guy. And already going to Yale, he graduated from Yale. So already hearing that is amazing because, again, like with Chris Carter, already getting into Stanford or Yale for Craig Breslow, already getting into Yale is hard because Yale is a really good university. And then after graduating from it is also pretty hard because, I mean, Yale, it's a really good university. So Craig Breslow decided to become an LB player. And I would say that turned out to be a pretty good decision because he wasn't so bad. And finally, coming in at number one, Ross Ohlendorf. Now, the only really reason why Ross Ohlendorf was known was really because of his windup, because he had a pretty weird windup. But again, like m most of the players on this list, he didn't have that good of an LB career. 30 wins, 41 career losses, 4.82 career ERA, 444 career strikeouts. Not too good. 
But the reason why Ollendorf was really smart because it was because when it came to mathematics, this guy was the guy to go to. He was an engineer at Princeton and he majored operation research. This guy was just a really smart dude and he went to Princeton again with the other players already getting into the university like that is hard and Ollendorf was really the guy who was into engineering so Ollendorf after college decided to become an MLB player and wasn't too good but yeah guys that is gonna be it for this video thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're new and I will see you all next time I'm out